Hey, it is Monday, April 6th, and this is the Daily Word in the Crisis. I hope some of you are watching. You know, every day, I'm barba... I can talk. <laughs> every day, I am bombarded with conspiracy theories about this virus that people tend to accept as fact. I mean, I just get a slew of them, one after another after another. You know, it's a, one will say it's a bioweapon created in China. No, it's the effect of 5G radiation on your cell phone affecting your body, and it's a plot to take over the world. No, it's chemtrails, and it goes on and on and on. No, this virus thing is all a giant hoax to bring in the new world order. This is what, this is what I get every day. The most recent one I heard is that Muslims are deliberately spreading the virus to promote their nefarious agenda. And because people are frightened right now, they accept these things as fact. But when you start feeding on this stuff, what does it accomplish? I mean, really, what does it accomplish? We all sit in our homes. We're locked down in social isolation. We're powerless to do anything real about any of this. We're kind of stewing in our own juices and full of anxiety that seems to grow by the day. The worst part isn't whether any of the conspiracy theories are true. The worst part is that it distracts us from where we need to be focused. The prophet Habakkuk saw the rising power of Babylon, and he saw um, you know, how they were swallowing up other nations, and he saw how they were leaving a trail of destruction behind them. He saw the coming destruction of Judah and Jerusalem. He saw it all. And it wasn't just the coming destruction that troubled him. I mean, if you saw an army, a huge army coming to wipe your nation out, wouldn't you be troubled? I mean, you watch them gobbling up all the nations around you. So it troubled him. And he knew what the aftermath would look like. He knew the aftermath of that, of that conquest, the coming of, of Babylon, this, this powerful, ruthless nation. He knew that it would bring about economic collapse. He knew that it would bring about poverty. He knew that it would bring about devastation. And in addition to seeing the horrors of Babylon coming, listen to his cry to the Lord about his own people in the decades before the Babylonians came. This is what he said. This is Habakkuk 1, start at verse 3. Why do you make me see iniquity and cause me to look on wickedness? Yes, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contention rises. Therefore the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous, therefore justice comes out perverted. Does anything here sound familiar? Violence, strife, contention, justice perverted, wickedness on every side. You know, he struggled just as you and I do to overcome anxiety over what he saw happening and what was yet to come. But you want to listen carefully to what he prayed at the end and what he finally settled on. It starts with a confession and it ends with a lift. And by the way, that uh, new song, churchandministries.org, on there, that looks huge on my screen. If it looks huge on yours, that's a tech glitch, that's an accident. But uh, that'll tell you where to go to look us up. This is what he said. Habakkuk 3.16 I heard, and my inward parts trembled. At the sound, my lips quivered. Decay enters my bones, and in my place I tremble, because I must wait quietly for the day of distress, for the people to arise who will invade us. Now listen to what he says. Though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food. Though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls. See, that's an ancient description of economic collapse. Verse 18, Yet I will, ex yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he has made my feet like hind's feet, and makes me walk on my high places. Well, the hind is a deer that can live in the high places, the steep places on the rocks, because its hind legs step precisely where the front legs have stepped. What Habakkuk did was to make a firm decision to exult in the Lord no matter what he saw coming. 
he would decide with his will to walk in the joy of the Lord and draw strength from him. That decision of the will was the front legs. The rest of him would follow, like the hind with the back legs stepping where the front legs had gone. Now, what am I saying? We are not victims. That's what I'm saying. We're not victims. We are not helpless, no matter what situation we face. But the secret, the secret to that victory is the choice, choice to tap into the joy of the Lord that's our strength and that flows from his Holy Spirit who dwells in us who have received Jesus as Lord and Savior. If we didn't have him, we'd have no hope, just like the Gentiles. We have a hope. Turn away from feeding on the news. <clears throat> Turn away from feeding on the conspiracy theories. Turn away from the accusing and the blaming going on in the world around us. That only feeds fear and anxiety. The Lord alone is our strength and our salvation. And pray for those who do have the power to change things. Pray for the president. Pray for the Congress. Pray for your state officials. Pray that they will see whatever is really going on and that they will act appropriately. Don't sacrifice your peace and joy on the altar of things that you really can't do anything about. Focus on Jesus. Dive deep into his spirit. The greatest move of God in history is just over the horizon. This season is a preparatory time. It's a time of purified focus. It's a time of purified devotion. It's a time of purified relationships. Use it. Use it wisely. I have been. And it makes all the difference. And I'll tell you up front, I'm just going to tell you prophetically, we will come through this. And there will be a resurgence of prosperity. I don't know how long it will last. I'm thinking three to seven years before another real test comes. This is our time to prepare. I prophesied in, in December 2016 that we had four years to prepare, and in the fourth year there would be a bending. I saw it in a vision of, of four sticks with, with the fourth one bending like, like this. I think you can see it. And the Lord said, you have four years in which to prepare. Four years. And in the fourth year, a bending. And he said in that period of time, we needed to recover <clears throat> because we had lost. We needed to recover the art of the tremble, re relearning how to fear God. So this is it. This is it. God tells us these things because he loves us. He warns us about these things because he loves us. And now we're in that time. But it's a time the enemy intended for evil. God intends it for good. Watch for the greatest revival of our lifetime, of any lifetime, to to pour through us and bring in a harvest of souls. And so I want to bless you all with peace. I want to bless you all with a gift of worship. I want to bless you all with a gift of praise. That even though the economy might, even though the cattle would be gone from the stalls and, and the crops would fail, the economy would fail, even in the midst of all of that, yet I will exult in the Lord. I will choose to find my joy in him. Amen.